Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. It is December the f uh, actually, it's still December the 3rd, but recording this all December the 3rd, gonna release it December the 4th, you know, you know, just, just to get it all out the way. And it's the first oh, lacrosse update of the season. We gotta talk some lacrosse and everything like that. So there's a lot of things we need to go over. Uh, the NLL has started. There's been some guys that have been put on the unable to play list, but then it's like these guys play like Cody Jamison and I think one of the Stotts brothers. But, you know, um, there's our week one scores right there to tip off opening weekend. And what an opening weekend, really. Um, Halifax beat Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan, again, brought a lot of guys over. Uh, but ultimately, Halifax got the victory. Albany surprised me in winning 12 to 10, but again, Ty Kirst is him. I think we've established that already. Las Vegas is still very young. In fact, I think they will finish at the bottom of the NLL this year. Again, very young team, very talented team. But ultimately, I think the Desert Dogs will be last in the NLL. Um, Top of the NLL still kind of wonky to me right now. <laughs> like, it's still a combination of like Buffalo, Toronto, uh, San Diego. You know, it's still a combination of those three, in my opinion, right now. That's why I'm leaning towards to win the championship. And Rochester beat Calgary, um, and Philadelphia beat New York. Um, main guy I want to highlight is Clark Pedersen. He had the time of his life on Saturday. Of course, there were other guys that had the time of their lives in that game between Halifax and Saskatchewan as well. Definitely one of the games the weekend, in my personal opinion. Um, you know, like guys like CDB, you know, had, you know, had 60 saves, you know. I mean, it, 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 it's uh, Warren Hill, you know, has been playing pretty good uh, and everything like that. So, I mean, things, things are just, the things are just stinging. The things are just stinging, you know. Jake Withers as well for Halifax. Again, I think Halifax is in a better position than they were, you know, you know, last year. So it, it's going to be a long season again. We have 18 games. Most teams are going to be playing, you know, well, everybody's going to play each other, of course. So and then, you know, for the teams they'll play a second time so you know this year is going to be a hell of a lot weirder in the nll can't say you know i'm not excited because i am beyond excited we our espn schedules are out our tsn schedules are out so you know got some games nationally of course that first game uh, between philly and new york on saturday night was ultimately sandwiched in between you know college football so i couldn't watch it but I am gonna be gonna keep my eye on, you know, at least the ESPN games. I'll try and find a way to finagle the TSN games and everything like that to get the stream for that for those games of the week. So yeah, the NLL is starting up, and I need to move myself over for this if I can. So yeah, um, there we go, kind of. So yeah, there's the PLL, there's our 18s, and um, I made a post like a couple weeks ago how sad I was that there was no Dallas team again. I thought there would be, I thought it'd be the Atlas, I thought I would be switching my affiliation to the Atlas, but ultimately, I'm not going to support a New York team. No, 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 no. So there you have it, our Utah Archers, the New York Atlas, the Philadelphia Water Dogs. God, that Water Dogs logo looks so ugly. The Carolina Chaos, the California Redwoods, Maryland Whippy Snakes, Denver Outlaws, the Boston Cannons. Of course, Denver and Boston are holdovers from the MLL days. And again, um, Carolina will be in a uh, Western division with Denver, Cali, and Utah, and the other teams will be in the East and the schedule will come out on New Year's Day, January the 1st. Free agents can be signed starting, you know, in March and everything like that. Player, I think there have been some players that have been released into the pool already. And again, several venues aren't known as of yet, but again, we'll find out, you know, where those are soon. 
you know, so there's hypotheticals for some of these teams' venues, like Super Park for Philly, you know, um, you know, wherever Carolina goes, it's going to be Charlotte, California, same thing will be like San Jose, San Diego, Denver, a little bit more obvious, Boston, a little bit more obvious, maybe Maryland's a little bit more obvious. I think the lack of a Midwest team hurts more than helps, and and I think the fact that a lot of these teams are located where MLL teams used to be also hurts. Um, like, and again, the PLL was supposed to be the alternative. PLL was supposed to be the thing that was different from the MLL to show that the franchise model in the MLL was not it. And ultimately, they have come back to that mindset while still trying to trying to do the hybrid thing of keeping the touring model, but having, you know, cities and teams attached to said, uh, or rather cities attached to said teams. And ultimately it just, it just doesn't fit. It just doesn't vibe well with me. And of course, you know, you see a logo is missing and that's the Chrome. The Chrome are dead for now, at least. So, you know, we're going to rock with our eight teams, you know, for the foreseeable future. But again, right now, I just I just don't know. I just don't know how to feel about this. I'm personally more, you know, more on the negative side of things, the positive. But again, I, I'm ready for the PLS schedule for 2024 to come out and I'll still be watching. I just won't have a team anymore. Um you know, it was fun supporting the Water Dogs from the past three years, but ultimately the Water Dogs are in Philly now. I'm not supporting Philadelphia anything because I hate that city with every fiber of my bitty. You know, every fiber of my being. You know, I really do. I don't like it sports teams, so I'm going to have to hate the Philadelphia Water Dogs now. And instead of it being the Water Dogs, you know, look at that logo. I mean, look at that. I mean, look at the downgrades. Downgrades are just absolutely significant for basically every team <laughs> as far as logos go. But it is what it is with the PLL. Whatever. We're going to keep rocking. Still going to watch it. But it's just my support has vastly gone down for the PLL. And then, you know, uh, Peterborough, Kitchener, you know, Nippian, you know, tried to join the uh, OJLL again. You know, they got denied back in October, and they got denied again. And you know, and, you know, the Knights publicly called out Peterborough and Kitchener for this decision, and they needed all eleven OJLL teams to vote yes, but to vote no, and really. You know, I don't know what the issue is. Is it about travel? You know, really, I think that's the main issue pe these two teams have. Is like, is it about travel? Is it about competition? Kitchener is like, you know, what three and thirty-seven the past two couple seasons. You know, so I don't know. I don't know what it is that says this team cannot join. But it's kind of it's it, it's again it's a travesty that. Nepian can't join the OJLL. They should be in this league. The point of these league, the point of these, you know, junior leagues is to, you know, help guys advance and grow and get to the next level to where they can play, you know, they're not playing in the front of a thousand people, they're playing in front of ten thousand and making more money, you know, and having, you know, you know, the passion for the game and everything like that to, you know, keep keep it up, you know. I think some of these players want to win <laughs> mental cups and man cups, you know. You know, playing at a level that's, you know, perceived as higher, you know, in the hierarchy of things. But ultimately, it just is what it is at the end of the day. And thus, Nepia will stay where they are so it's just it's just an unfortunate situation i feel for the knights they they should be in the ljll and the ljll again they follow me on twitter so 
you know, I, I, I'm confused. I'm confused why Lee, I'm confused why these two teams specifically would deny them. But again, he explained why these two teams denied the Knights joining. And again, one last time, it's a sad situation. There's nothing we can do about it now. Maybe things will change in the near future. Hopefully, in the near future, the Knights will join the Ontario Junior Lacrosse League. So, in any case, that's going to do it for me. As far as talking uh, our lacrosse you know, discussion, and I will come back in a couple weeks. You know, the NLL should have, you know, teams play like, you know, teams will be, have played like two to three games on the time I come back and talk to you about the NLL and everything like that. So I'm going to skedaddle and I'm going to upload this and have it premiere for y'all tomorrow. So again, y'all take care. I'll have a good rest of your week and yeah, I'll see you soon, lacrosse fans. I'll see you soon.